Hey guys, Ryan Podcast starring Nick. Me. Nick. It's regular Nick, not Nicky. Not Nicky. Yeah. It's just Nick. Just Nick. Just stop that. It's me. So today in the podcast, we're going to talk about Doctor Who. Who? What? Um, we'll talk about um, how Venom ate Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Um, TVs. Oh, yeah, TVs. We talk about TVs. What, oh, uh, your panic room? Yep. And what else do we talk about? The mall where you can move in <laughs> and uh, make your own video game room slash comic book store. And it's going to be so much fun, probably. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, stuff like that. So you guys enjoy the podcast. Nikki should be back tomorrow, but I, for one, feel like she's probably going to enjoy time off so much that she doesn't come back, just like I did, except I came back. I hope she comes back, because I want to go... And- into the warm confines of the newsroom and just it, be in there. It just holds There's, you snug. It's so much work down here, guys. It, so much work. Yeah. It is a lot more talking. It is. Truth to that. So you guys enjoy the podcast. We'll just keep drinking this coffee. Bye. The worst of the riot box set is now available nowhere because we know you wouldn't want it anyway. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Look who is out of the newsroom and into the studio. Hey guys, how's it going? It's we me. start becoming a team right, <laughs> right now. <laughs> Good morning, Nick. That was stuck in my head after the fundraiser for way longer than it should oh, have been. Man, I'm, <laughs> I'm at traffic lights, checkout lines, <laughs> telling people, hey guys. Anytime you just need that burst of inspiration, it's just like, there he is. Start telling people we got to become a team right now. Yeah. So dude, you're, you're set free. You're in the studio. Mm-hmm. How does it feel? Feels good, man. You're, Feels you're good. Right. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. I'm here. Uh, the Canadians make a darn good waffle breakfast sandwich. Yeah, so dude. I am ready to go. Nick hit hit up uh, Tim Hortons on his way in here, and we had what was that? A waffle? It was a yeah waffle sausage uh, breakfast sandwich. How it was lo- it was a it was so good. How long do you think they've been making that? <laughs> How long? Yeah, because I, I I had no idea they even had that. Yeah, I didn't know either. Uh, and I saw on their window as I was pulling in, like, hey, breakfast sandwiches, two for four. This was not included in that deal. Of course not. I was uh, planning on getting... These are a getting, premium sandwich. I was planning on do, going the frugal route, saving some money. But then I saw, oh, as I pulled up to the thing, yeah. this maple waffle you know, sandwich. sausage sandwich. And mm-hmm. I was like, all right, you know what? Obadiah is worth it. And yes. I'm going to get him one too. He's worth it. <laughs> He's worth it. So, so I did. It looks like they've been out. This guy, here's somebody on YouTube reviewing it end of May. So it looks like they've been out for like, you know, a couple of months, something like that. So that's a long time. The longer than I thought. But well, you know what? I never go to Tim Hortons me for neither. breakfast. Me ever. neither. And I, it just happened to be on my way in. And I was like, you know what? Let's do it. Yeah. Tim Hortons. I couldn't tell you the last time I've done Tim Hortons for breakfast, and I don't know why. Uh, I think it's because, all right, I took the I took the eggs off of my sandwich because they put onions in their eggs, so I never... They do? They, Boy, that I'll seems tell you, like they, a, they used to. That seems like something that you should know about up front, right? <laughs> like, a lot of people don't like onions. I, I don't. So I don't yeah. know, but that might I be... don't mind them, but you can definitely tell when they're in something. Oh, yeah. Come so, on. So yeah. okay. the, uh, the guys at White Castle, like, I don't think that is as good as a White Castle uh, Belgian waffle breakfast sandwich. Have you had one of those? I have not, but okay. I, I did go. I checked the. at So last night I decided that I was going to get breakfast for us. Right. Okay. I checked Taco Bell. They don't open early enough. Yep. Come on. I checked Waffle House. They open right when the show starts. Right. So it was basically between Tim Hortons and McDonald's. That's exactly. That is early morning life. That You can also go to uh, Starbucks, but that like those are literally the three things that are open. Yeah. You so can also, Tim won out. And you can also go to a, a gas station, but I'll tell you. Sure you can. <laughs> <laughs> that that feels like when things are things are low. Gas station coffee, okay. Gas station <laughs> breakfast sandwiches, mm, mm. if you have to. Mm. Remember, if you can just make it through the rest of the riot, then you can probably make it through the rest of the week <laughs> and through the next several months, and then it'll practically be Christmas. The riot on Radio U. So my favorite news story that popped up last week had to be it had to be that Lady Gaga fans. <laughs> 
were smearing Venom on Twitter Mm -hmm. so that more people would go see Lady Gaga's movie instead of going to see Venom. I don't know how real that really was, but everybody was saying it was real. You reach a level in fandom for something that there's a line. And I feel like that line was crossed to, like, there's levels, right? Like, there's the casual Lady Gaga fan. There's the Lady Gaga fan who knows what all of her albums are and a lot of her songs. And then you have this. Then you have the real ones, You cross into crazy. No, that's what a real (laughs) Lady Gaga fan does. A real Lady Gaga fan is out there for her, imagine a making la- it happen. Imagine a Lady Gaga fan who's also a Venom fan, but is just torn apart inside. Like, I just, I love Venom, so but th- I love Lady Gaga. You know what you do? What you do just, I do? You make a couple of accounts, and you just work it that way. And <laughs> yeah. so it ends up breaking even. You come out with a pro-Venom account, and then mm-hmm. a pro-A Star is Born account, and then you mm-hmm. just... I mean, it cancels out. And what about the Bradley Cooper fans out, out there just caught in the middle? They're, they don't have those. They don't? <laughs> there's, no, there's no Bradley Cooper fans. He's, he's the guy's guy. He's, 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 Americans, he's America's favorite. I do think it's funny that like he emerged. I don't know. There's a show I used to love called Alias. And he was, he was like, on that? Yeah. Wow. Recurring role. Okay. Like, he, he had a major role in that for I'm, the first I'm sorry. I just offended seasons. someone. Yeah, <laughs> maybe but, you. But no, I'm fine. But like, <laughs> and then like he was he, on that show. He's like the pathetic friend that's always in trouble and all this stuff. And now he's, he's like come a long way. Leading man. Well, look action. at McConaughey. Look at Chris Pratt. Okay. Look it's at true. these guys who had humble beginnings as like the doofy guy on TV. So you're and saying now look at him. There's hope for me. Like I've, <laughs> I have a future as an action star. You just got to start with that. Goofy TV role, like the fat slob, hey, I don't know how to live. (laughs) And then the next thing you know, (laughs) you're in. Yep. So over the weekend, uh, the Gaga fans were defeated, though. A Star is Born came in number two. Okay. $41 million, though. Man, on an October, like the middle of October, I guess it's not middle, the first weekend in October, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Venom came in at number one, and I can honestly say I'm blown away by this. $80 million. Wow. Wow. For Venom. Wow. Venom's not that cool, guys. He's not. But th- they did hit a perfect window of not many comic book movies. There's nothing out. Out. Yeah, no, you're Is right. Is there anything this um, like no. Christmas season? No? I mean, well, you've got Aquaman on, I believe, Christmas Day or like the week of Christmas or something like that. But that's it. There are no comic book movies. And Marvel normally has like a November yeah. comic book movie and they have for the last couple of years they had thor ragnar ragnarok they had dr strange mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. you but almost said doctor who i did it was very close <laughs> uh, but like <laughs> that's it i don't know like maybe people are just what are you doing i don't know i didn't see venom like i just i don't know i like when i looked at the trailers i was just like no no the people marketing venom are like all right guys this is it nothing's out there we have a chance. Let's make some money. Everybody pass this picture around with Venom with his tongue out. <laughs> That's cool. Ever grab milk right out of the fridge to pour in your cereal only to realize that your stupid roommate left an empty carton in the fridge? That emptiness is nothing compared to how you're about to feel. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. So yesterday, if you guys have been paying attention, there's a new Doctor Who, and Nikki said I wouldn't watch it. And I told her... That her telling me that I wouldn't watch it is exactly what I needed to make sure that I did watch it. <laughs> you just needed that motivation. Because I told oh, yeah, her. Yeah, I will watch it. I ex- you Just wait and see. I'll watch it. Nick, that sounds exactly like what I said to her. <laughs> I told her, I'm watching this thing because now I'm spite watching. And many people have asked me, well, what's spite watching? Spite watching is real. Mm-hmm. And I've totally done it. I mm-hmm. did it today. Or I guess yesterday. And that's when you watch something out of sheer spite because someone told you that you wouldn't. Yep. Don't tell me I won't watch it. I'll watch it. I will watch Super Troopers too. I will. I will. So I did. I watched uh, the new Doctor Who yesterday. Jodie Whittaker, first female doctor in history that like on the show. You can go to a hospital and find female doctors all over the place. Sure. There's, you know, that just to be yeah. clear about that. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I liked it. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't watched a Doctor Who that I've liked in probably th- a good three or four years. 
Maybe not. I don't know. Whatever. I wasn't a big fan of Peter Capaldi. I watched a couple episodes and I was out. What's the and, guy's name? Uh, the spindly guy. Uh, Matt Smith. Is that it? the guy who vo- voices Scrooge McDuck on the new DuckTales? Is that? <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I love. Dude. The that's, my, that's my point of reference. <laughs> <laughs> new voice. I'm going <laughs> to. Okay. Wait. It's here. No, that's David Tennant. Okay. He was the guy before the guy. Have you seen the, the new DuckTales? No. It's so good. <laughs> you should watch it. I'm not okay. even lying. Okay. Well, you know what? There's... Do you have Disney XD in your cable package? Uh, yeah, I do. Check it out. I can probably get it on demand right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, Doctor Who. Right, yeah. So it was new Doctor Who yesterday, and you know what? Thank you, Jared. Also, he, he just texted in and, and he... let me know who the guy was. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? Let me say this. I liked it a lot. I, I thought uh, that Jody Whittaker was fantastic as the doctor. Uh-huh. Uh, I also like the fact that, at least from what I've read, they say that you're not going to, like, they're not going back to any of the past mythology. Okay. So, like, everything. They're that not you're gonna, tapping into the deep lore? No, they're not. In fact, that's part of why I'm interested, because after a while, it got to be so self-referential uh-huh. it was like yeah but what about the the daleks and the this and the that and it's all a plot of the cybermen and you're like oh, okay but with this one they say they're not doing any of those past stories it's going to be fresh stuff i thought the companions or potential companions they introduced yesterday were pretty cool and i thought okay the vibe felt very different there's something about this that to me at least and let's be clear i'm not a real doctor who guy but I like it. Mm-hmm. And what I saw yesterday felt really different. It felt unique. And I was like, you know what? You guys might have something here. Is there so, a different, uh, like... Showrunner? Yes. Okay. In fact, in fact, I think most of the creative team, like in the writer's room and stuff, it's new people. Okay. And at least that's what, again, I'm just on so, the outs- so I'm they're pulling on the a, outskirts here. They're pulling a J.J. Abrams, like... Well, not as much Lens Slayer, but, you know, like there is a... <laughs> Just like a reimagining of, like, all the names are the same and some of the ideas are similar, but it goes in a totally different direction. It it just felt very different, which to me, as a casual Doctor Who fan, I was like, you know what? This is what you guys need right here. You need to make... It needs to feel different than it has and maybe if you're like a real doctor who fan you're like i hate you and i hate all the people like you i want to i want the robots bring them back the riots is an award-winning morning show it's literally a medal for sucking now that is a medal for trying okay radio you I got to tell you guys, I've gone from being casually interested and I, it was, it's been a whole journey, you know, like ironically interested to casually interested to really wanting to see it, but then being too lazy to go and then waiting for the home video release. And now I feel like the cycle has started again, where I've gone from being ironically to casually to now fever pitch interested in seeing the Meg. I I need to see it. I need to see that movie. It doesn't come out until the end of the month, but maybe, you know. Sit down, some popcorn, uh, some shark themed snacks. Like maybe, do they still make shark bites? Candy? Are they doing a, a 4K release? I'm sure they will. I mean, they they need to. It's it's a matter of you got to see all those teeth in crystal clear. I want it to be 4K. As, yeah, I want it to be as clear as possible. Uh, but you know, the megalodon is not a laughing matter, Nick. The megalodon was, they think, a real shark. I mean, they've got the teeth. Mm-hmm. That makes them pretty sure there was a Meg out there somewhere. I went to an aquarium over the summer, and uh, I assume it was a replica. But, uh, yeah, the, the teeth were big. They were big. Yeah. Well, the Carcharodon Megalodon was discovered in 1843 when some scientists believed that they had found fossilized teeth that they thought were from dragons. Dude, how awesome would that be? <laughs> this whole time. Imagine being a scientist back then, and your first thought is... This is probably from a dragon. Science was, seems normal. Science was so much cooler in the 1800 guys. <laughs> it's like we got dragon teeth over here. Here, and we just hired Jim. I got a headache. I need some laudanum. <laughs> He's gonna take this tooth and sketch us a whole dragon from it. So that's gonna be pretty awesome. <laughs> so they think that the megalodon went extinct, you know, millions of years ago, et cetera, et cetera. But now. There's a team of scientists that have been given a a $204,000 grant 
And they're going to take that grant money and they're going to try to figure out how the Megalodon went extinct. And their first step is going to be to rent out a theater and watch The Meg with Jason Statham. <laughs> for a historical uh, presentation on the effects of if the Megalodon was alive today. That, yeah. That's how they're going to phrase it. So in that movie, the Megalodon is alive underneath a thermocline deep in the ocean. Ah. So that obviously, again, if I was a scientist and I had $204,000, that would be my first step. Mm-hmm. My second step would be to watch Megalodon and Megalodon 2 on sci-fi. And then they also had, was it Megalodon versus Piranosaurus? <laughs> <laughs> You're entering a world that I have no idea. But you mentioning sci-fi does make a whole lot of sense. Because hey. those totally sound like things that exist on sci-fi. Dude, there's a whole like subgenre here of people... Like riding and making imaginary sea battles between Megalodon and <laughs> other animals. I love the Megalodon internet. versus giant sea turtle. How about Megalodon versus Mosasaur? You sure, know? that's a thing. Yeah. The worst of the riot. It's like Lucky Charms, but no marshmallows. Radio U. For those of you that were wondering, I would just like to point out. That Assassin's Creed Odyssey came out on Friday, and guess what I didn't do? That's right. Slow clap. That's right. Come on. Slow clapping with death. Come on. (laughs) Every day of my life. (laughs) I did not buy Assassin's Creed on Friday. Yes. Good job. I was strong. I stood strong. You can, it's going to be on sale so soon. I know, I know. I mean, if you look out on the horizon there, you see, you see fall Black weather. Black Friday. Oh, yeah. fall, okay, yeah. Fall right, weather weather's weather. first, right, and then it. after that, Thanksgiving. Yes, Black Friday, Thanksgiving, Christmas, it's all right there. It's all right out there if I can just right wait it out. Right there beyond the horizon. I'll tell you how I did it, is I, I was consuming a bunch of Assassin's Creed hype. I Like, the hype machine was in full swing, and I was swinging with it. And then I was like, wait a minute, Swinging. I have a game where you can do web swinging. Mm-hmm. And so I did. I stopped looking at Assassin's Creed stuff. And my thought was, this is so dumb, but it's true. Thursday night when I went home to start my time off, I put in Spider-Man and I was like, hey, after an hour of playing Spider-Man, if you still want Assassin's Creed, you could probably get it. And you know what? Uh, it's all I played all weekend with Spider-Man. There that, you go. That game is so good. It is so good. And I played it. A ton Thursday night, basically all day Friday, a ton of the day Saturday, and a little bit of the day yesterday, and I'm still, I think I'm at like 72% complete on the campaign, but that far into the single player storyline, it's kind of an open world game where you're Spider-Man, that's where the name comes from, Mm -hmm. and Marvel's Marvel's Spider-Man, you're right, Yeah, you're right, just want to draw a line there. But in that game, they keep introducing new things in the open world. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought I got to a point where I'd unlocked everything. That's a negative. (laughs) At like 70-some percent, it unlocks another thing that I haven't done yet. That's good. when they opened up these new activities, I started trying them yesterday. And I was like, you know what? I don't have the patience for this right now. Oh, was it not? (laughs) It was hard. Not a good addition? No, it was a great. it, It actually was a good thing. But when I started playing it, Spider-Man was getting punched a lot. He was getting shot a lot. Uh-oh. And I was like, you know what? Spider-Man doesn't need this abuse. What he needs is to put the PlayStation in rest mode. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you reach a point where you're like, okay, my hand-eye coordination and my you know ability to concentrate are not helping Spider-Man be the Spider-Man that he needs to be. Yeah. So he, you got to take a break. He needed a little something. <laughs> Did you know the riot can help you see into the future? Every time Obadiah says he likes a show, impress all your friends by correctly predicting it will be canceled by the end of the year. Canceled. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's not funny. Works every time. It's the riot on Radio U. So, Nick, yeah. let's, let's talk about Chris Evans. Captain America. Hang on. I got to get the tissues. <laughs> so he over the weekend sent out that tweet or was it was it Friday or was it Saturday talk about how he had wrapped up his time as Captain America yeah I think it was I think it was Friday okay was it Friday yeah yeah so what what do you think is that real he says uh, here's the official quote you're right four days ago officially wrapped on Avengers 4 
It was an emotional day, to say the least. Playing this role over the last eight years has been an honor to everyone in front of the camera, behind the camera, and in the audience. Thank you for the memories. Eternally grateful. <gasps> wait, he said eternally. Does that mm-hmm. mean he's dead? Avengers Eternal War. If, wait, is he, he dead? Just, he just... He said eternal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's in the Soul Stone. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Robert Downey Jr. tweeted out uh, a picture of to Infinity, War, and Beyond, and it was Buzz and Woody from Toy Story, but, you know, Captain America and Iron Man. I wonder Man. how much he paid the or commissioned the artist to draw that. <laughs> to create that. Because that, that looks cool. I have no idea. To me, it just looked like a, Although he's a kid's in coloring with... page. Oh, that someone had colored. Like, did you look? Did you like really look at it? I, I mean, all right. No, you're right. You're right. That's not. It's it's more complicated than that. It, yeah. It's. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It so, looks good. I yeah. mean, the the shield is in there, right? So it looks more custom. The Captain yeah. America shield is it in there? Yeah. Look. Wait. Let me look again. He's got it. Oh, you're right. Yeah. You're right, but there's nothing on the Buzz Lightyear that, aside from the coloring, that would make you think Iron Man. Yeah, you're you're right. Uh, the face I, looks weird though. That is not official Disney art. There's no way. Well, if they were doing like an, uh, I don't know. You're right. That it's probably commissioned, and it was probably a hundred million dollars. So, it's so nice. who's the real winner in all of this? The guy who made that artwork. That's right the there. real winner. So, what do you think, Chris Evans? Really done with Captain America? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, what is he? What is else does he have? Check his IMDb. See what he's working on. What is he working on right now? See, my thought is that to me, he doesn't actually say I'm done. Everyone right. says his contract was up after the fourth Avengers movie, but I thought Robert Downey Jr.'s contract was up too. Yeah, which is why they keep paying him a hundred billion dollars <laughs> every time. <laughs> He wanders onto set yeah. for a Marvel movie. He's like, Robert, okay, look. Now, after Avengers 4, you're not going to have to be in any big movies if you don't want to. But post credit scenes, what do you say? Well, or what? how about this? Your face, like, you never show up. The Iron Man armor does. You give us half of an afternoon recording That's the video. so true. Like, you know what blew my mind and might blow some people out there's mind right now? Uh, Robert Downey Jr. has never put on a suit of never. Iron Man armor for never. these movies. It's just him in like a shorts and a t-shirt. That is so. I, when I found that out, I was like, "What? No, <laughs> no! He's, he's Iron Man. It can't be true. Stop it!" Yeah, yeah. no, but he's got true. a couple movies coming up. He's got Untitled Avengers movie, uh-huh. which is Avengers Four. Then Knives Out, The Devil All the Time, Jekyll, Greenland. And defending Jacob. Okay, those those are all listed upcoming Chris Evans roles. So so he's uh, he's working. I mean, maybe he wants to take a little break. We discussed this at lunch last week. Like it is very uh, like established in comic book fandom lore, whatever. That sometimes characters die, and other characters take over. Sometimes they disappear, and then they come back later. Sometimes they're resurrected. Stuff like that just happens. Hey, you know what, dude? And the other thing they could do is with this uh, Thanos thing and the Infinity Gauntlet, mm-hmm. they could re completely reinvent everything. Like, yeah. Oh, look, Captain America's back, but when we put the universe back together, it was actually Bob Smith <laughs> instead. <laughs> And he became Captain America. It's like, Roger it, Stevenson. It could That's be anything. who it is. It could be anything. And you're just like, you know what? Uh, wait, all of a sudden, everybody is a lot younger now. So we've <laughs> we've hired all of these people from the Disney Channel. And they're, yep. they're the Avengers now. Look at that. Wow. It's crazy. Could be. That feeling when you hear that every school in the state is closed but yours? Now you know how we feel. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. You know what? I think I'm ready to say it. This Tim Hortons coffee is pretty good. Yeah, I like it. I've never just had a straight up like drip Tim Hortons black cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. And I mean, no cream, no sugar, just drinking the coffee and. I enjoy it. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I mean, maybe our standards have been lowered after so many years of life beating us down that just about any coffee will do the job in the morning. So browbeaten by life that I'll just drink anything. <laughs> is that where, <laughs> is that where we're at? Like, I got to come in here. Or, just give me dirty or water. Let's, you know, glass half full. Maybe it's just 
It's good coffee. Maybe Tim Hortons good. has refined the formula up there in the great white north over these many years, and they've just got a good cup of coffee. Well, I started drinking black coffee probably four or five months ago. I don't know what happened to me, but like one morning I woke up and I was just like, I don't want like it was just weird. I started drinking coffee with cream and I'm like this. I don't want this in my coffee. Stop it. And I just quit. Like mm-hmm. cold turkey, the creamer just started drinking black coffee. <laughs> it was weird, right? Even and in the winter, with like the used to do like the peppermint mocha I, creamer. Okay. I do have in my fridge right now. I have some peppermint mocha creamer, and I had a cup of coffee over the weekend that I put creamer in, and it was good. Like I enjoyed it, but to me, it wasn't coffee. It was like like caffeinated milk, sweet beverage, whatever. <laughs> It, it wasn't like I was drinking coffee, coffee. Yeah. And so now, and I mean, I don't know, I've just turned into this coffee snub. So I've been making my way back around and testing coffee at places because now I've been drinking my coffee black. Like McDonald's, no, that's getting cream. Maybe cream and sugar. Like that, no, no, I'm I not drinking don't that. Mind, I, don't, I don't mind the McCafe blend. Something happened at McDonald's a few years ago where it went incident? from... <laughs> They don't have noodles there. Okay. Well, uh, something happened where I don't know. They changed their blend or something. Yeah, I, they did. And I just I don't mind it black. Now, McDonald's coffee when it when it's piping hot is real good. When it starts cooling down and gets to room temperature, that's when it's not so great. not so much. Yeah. So okay, take it All or right. leave it. You know, whatever you want to do with that. Yeah, I, like this is good. Like I, I would drink this. This but, tells me like I can, I could stop through Tim Hortons and get a, a black cup of coffee and be okay. Because uh, the other thing I love is a Starbucks blend called Veranda. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Now, of course, at home I'm currently brewing. My friend Jeff, he's got a coffee shop, Coffee Shack Roasters. I'm brewing the Highland Grog mm. because sometimes I need a kilt and a cold <laughs> Highland morning. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> The riots. Apparently, some of the less athletic types go nuts for this stuff. Radio U. I got to tell you, one of my favorite things just in life is talking to somebody that's passionate about something that I just have no connection to whatsoever. Because you get an opportunity to get a peek into their inner life and stuff that, again, to you, you're like, I don't. I have no opinion on this, <laughs> but they obviously have a massively strong opinion about it. Uh, actually, that's how I feel about most of politics, which probably makes me a bad person. There you go. That's kind of where I'm at. So Kristen just texted this morning. Here's what she says. Good morning, Obi. Have you guys noticed the new Weather Channel app update? They totally destroyed everything that was good about it. (laughs) (laughs) And I was wondering if you had noticed that as well. You know what, Kristen? I don't want to destroy you on any level, but I want you to know I don't have the Weather Channel app installed on my phone. Right now I'm downloading it, and I don't know why, but it is taking a scary long time to download this app. Well, something that invokes this kind of response, you kind of want to find out, like, how bad is it? I know. Right? But the problem is, is that I'm going to look at this Weather Channel app, and it's going to be, to me, this is what the app is. But Kristen is going to be like, no, 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 the good old days. (laughs) Remember yesterday? <laughs> Remember when things were good before you guys destroyed everything that was good in the universe with updating that app? I will say to uh, to Kristen's point, I used to use the weatherchannel.com. I think weather.com just goes to like the weather channel. Yeah. I used to use them to check weather. But they have crammed so much oh my flash gosh, dude. ads stuff. Like if you want to see the forecast, you got to scroll down. Yeah. Like, there's just all this junk there. It's crazy. So, thank you, Kristen. Ah, Kristen says, see if you can actually find your weather. Yeah, okay. So they what they probably did is what they did to the website. They put it in the app, which is terrible. All right, all right. I'm looking at it right now. I'm, at, I'm opening up the Weather Channel app. Let's see <laughs> if I can find the weather. Okay. Search to add a location. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. Allow the weather access your, to your oh, location. You nope. Just, oh. I'm not going to do it. I'm not yep. going to let them do that. So, all right. I'm putting in our location. Mm-hmm. And let's see if I get the actual weather. Yep. Taking it. Okay. Now, Here Kristen, we go. I hate to say this, but it immediately brought up <laughs> today's weather. <laughs> the forecast. Maybe she allowed them to um, to use her location, Maybe. and that's the thing that, like, taps into all the, the ad uh, stuff. I mean, 
I like Chris and I'm so sorry, but it does. When I click, I, I clicked <laughs> out of it. Like, I, OK, I'm going to completely shut the app down. So I go back to it. Mm-hmm. But it would appear that at least let's see the weather channel. There's my location. And it just it just immediately goes there it, to the weather. OK. All right. Now, the other thing is that sometimes, uh, depending on what kind of phone you have, Samsung has their own little weather app. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the iPhone has theirs, and they use data from the That's Weather true. Channel. That is true. So she could be referring to that. Well, we don't know. The thing that I that I actually hate is there was a weather app called Storm. Mm-hmm. They had Storm and Storm Radar. Those are independent apps that I really, really, really liked. And the Weather Channel bought them, and I do feel like they gutted the things out of the app that I liked. Well, yeah. Well, the thing I loved about the Storm app is that it was <laughs> so simple, and it was easy to look at their radar and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, when I updated it the other day, I was like, Storm, now brought to you by the Weather Channel. <laughs> oh, no! no! <laughs> so I kind of understand where you're coming from. The Imperial March plays in the background. <laughs> It does. It was like, we have assimilated all that would you love. And you know what? I don't blame the storm, guys. I probably would have sold out to the Weather Channel, too. The Riot. They hate me. They hate you. They hate us. Why else would they make us listen to the worst of the Riot? Radio U. Nick says he was invited to a birthday party. I don't believe it. It's true. But what happened? You got well, invited my, to a party. My significant other was invited to a birthday party. So, so they I tagged felt along. compelled to bring you. Yeah. So it was out at a restaurant that was uh, a little more pricey than what you would like normally. It's it's no McDonald's birthday. Okay? So what you're saying is it wasn't McDonald's. It was more like a TGI Friday's. <laughs> More like a cheesecake factory, that fr- kind of a place. And the Friday's mascot came out, and everyone got to get their picture and sit on their lap. <laughs> happy, happy birthday, birthday, birthday. We can't sing the real birthday song because it's licensed. Yeah, that kind That's of thing. That's the one. Uh, anyway, no, it was like, uh, you know, probably like 20 to 30 bucks for an entree. Like that kind of a place. Okay, all right. Or, or. you could spend $12 and get a burger. Yeah, right? that's, that, I'm usually the burger guy. So, yeah, so exactly. But... Since we were invited to this birthday party, and it was, I think, total, like, maybe 12 people. Okay. So, very small group, and we brought a gift, but we weren't sure if they were going to cover the check. It was a a husband who was surprising his wife out at this place, and we were invited, and... um, Oh, that doesn't sound like a they pay situation. You don't think so? No. So you you thought that it was? We thought, we weren't sure. We weren't sure. And the funny thing was, like, we, the the guy forgot to tell us that it was out at a restaurant. He, like, stopped us uh, earlier in the week when we saw him out someplace, and he's like, hey, I'm having a surprise party. Um, Can you guys come? It's this Sunday. It's at this time. And we're like, okay, sure. Yeah, Yeah, we'll be there. So we go to their house at the time, and we go to their we go to the door, and he, he opens the door with, like, this shocked face. He's like, why aren't you at the restaurant? We're like, restaurant? You didn't what? say anything about it. <laughs> Dude, that's He did way- not tell us it was at a restaurant. <laughs> that's a way better st- story that you show up, she answers the door like, hey, what are you guys doing here? We're here for the surprise party. Well, thankfully, she was upstairs still getting ready. Okay. And he's like, get out of here. Go. Go. So she didn't know that we... You know, we're there. Okay, all right. So we get there, and uh, it comes time to order. And I thought about getting the burger because, you know, that's – if it's a toss-up and you're not sure, then you, you can go, go for the burger. Okay. But then I saw on the menu they had these crab cakes. Oh, my gosh. Nate. I haven't had crab oh cakes gosh. in forever, and it was an expensive – it was like a you know, upscale kind of place. I'm like, these are probably, like, the best crab cakes ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I got the crab cakes. And the check. And the check. <laughs> I, Dude, listen. Seriously. It was I fine. Have, I have never been to a birthday party where I thought someone was going to pay for my meal. Because I just assumed that outside of the elementary school, McDonald's, slash, jump house, whatever kind of birthday, if you're going to a restaurant, you better plan on paying for it. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> but you're like, no, no, no. Why didn't they pay for my crab cakes? <laughs> 
seriously. <laughs> I guess that just goes back to my old, you know, my old Nick personality of like, hmm, what can I get out of this? <laughs> I love the fact that you thought they were going to pay for it. I know. And the fact that you so bought the dumb. expensive thing. That remind me to never offer to buy you lunch because yep. I'm going to end up getting stiffed with like, you know, I, I know we're here, but uh, let's go next door. It, it was a life lesson that I learned, and now I'm a better, better person for it. Next time, I will humble myself, and I will get the burger. I just want to know if anybody else expects somebody <laughs> else to buy their lunch at a birthday party. You know, now that we're saying this out loud... <laughs> This sounds so much worse on me. Like, it makes me sound like such a cheapskate. Oh, yeah. And, you... and so, like, wanting to take advantage of people. I, I apologize. I, I feel it's, like... It was so bad. I mean, you have really, really maligned yourself. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it just rammed it into the ground there. I know, I know. You hate the riot. Why are they on the radio? Stupid. Yeah. Honestly, we can't trust them with anything else. It's the riot on Radio U. Nick, it's your chance. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Woo! I did it. You did it. <laughs> like, you passed the test. Yes. You passed the test. Do you ever do the second one? Uh, sometimes. Like You're on really Friday, feeling it. On on Thursday when I was here by myself yeah. and it was just me and the worst of the riot clips and I was like, you know what, we'll give a second clap. <laughs> Let's do it. So we did it. I mean, like, it got pretty crazy, but mm-hmm. we we totally did it. So, you know, everybody's got to make their own choices, Nick. Their own choices. So true. Like, whether or not to move into the New Horizon Mall. You ever what's, thought about that? What's that? Well, I'll tell you what, Nick. The New Horizon Mall is in Canada. And in Canada, in Calgary... You would find the New Horizon Mall. It's in North Calgary, and it's 320,000 square feet, and uh, they have about 500 units available, or, you know, total, and currently uh, they filled about 11 stores. <laughs> so That's usually what happens when a mall is about to be demolished. Um, or turned into a Halloween store. Well, they say, they say they've got 39 more stores that are opening, like, any day now. Just any okay. day. So sometime between now and the holidays. And five hundred? I mean, unless I am totally reading this wrong. Is this like supposed to be the Mall of Canada? Like they're big, like, hey, we know they have a Mall of America down there, but well, guess if, what? Mall they, of Canada. If they say five hundred units, that, that means five hundred places to rent out, right? Yeah, yeah, you would think. You know what that means? Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's that's a lot. So by the time they all open up, they're gonna have a whopping fifty stores in there. And the thing is, it's What are they going to do with all that empty space? I don't know. It's going to look so sad. What do you... Wait, I sent you a picture, like, some pictures of it. You can see, like, the... It's just hallway after hallway. It looks like you could film dystopian science fiction movies in it. Like, that would that would totally work if you wanted to do something like that. <laughs> but, like, it is just hallway after hallway of, like, glass. And there's nothing in it. It's really weird. And then there's two pictures of, uh, I assume, the, the guys that are involved in building this mall, and they just look so sad. They're like, they actually managed to get very sad looking <laughs> photos of these guys. They built they? this building and they didn't come. Please, somebody move into nobody, the mall. Nobody's here. So people in the area are saying that if, like, the pop up ads they're starting to see online or stuff like you can rent space in the mall for 400 a month, which is like nothing. What if they would let people live there? That's an idea. Mm-hmm. You guys 400 could, a month. That's a great price for an apartment. Some people are saying three to six months free rent if you're willing to sign a two-year lease. Okay. That, I would something. jump on that. That's something. Yeah, just leave the leave the paper up on the glass and you just live in there. Yeah. Okay, so here's how you do it. You say like, hey, I want to open up a comic book store, right? Um, so you fill the place with all of your... Stuff. Comic book memorabilia okay. that you've got laying around your room, and you don't actually sell anything. You just live in there. <laughs> and nobody knows. <laughs> nobody knows. It looks like a comic store because you've got stuff in boxes everywhere. You've got com- boxes of comics. People can browse through them if they want. But What's the price on this one? That one's not for sale. Yeah. You don't, you want, don't that want that one. one. Check it's the a, dollar bin over it's, there. It's no good. It's no good. That's how you do it, man. Four hundred a month. That man. actually makes more comic stores make more sense to me because I always go in there and I'm like, Are, is anybody buying anything? Because I never see people buying stuff when I'm <laughs> nope. in a comic shop. There's guys looking through 
as you do. Yeah. And uh, But do they ever buy the books that they are looking through? No. So it becomes like a small microcosm metaphor for this mall. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a big place that everything's set up, but nobody's buying anything. Or also, here's another option. You get all of your friends to bring all their video game consoles, put them in that room. You live there, but that's like the place that you and your buddies hang out you to hang play out. your games. Sure. Yeah. Just put up a little curtain. 400 a month. And you sleep in there. Boom. Hey, it's fine. I'm in. And, and you could come up with an awesome name for your apartment slash video game room. You could call it the New Horizon Mall apartment slash video game room. <laughs> that would be it's Got awesome. a heck of a ring to that it. That would be awesome. <laughs> Worst of the riot, not enough. Not enough. Check the blog and all things Riot at riot.radiou.com. Finally, a TV that will satisfy your needs. You're like, wants no needs. You need a bigger TV. Like, but I got a 50-inch TV. It's really nice. and it's 50-inch? It's what is this, 2000. Two? <laughs> it's a four. The room's only four by four, so I can't put a bigger TV in it. Well, get a bigger space. How big's your then, wall? How big is it? Did you see this, Nick? That Samsung is now making it commercially available an 85 inch 8K TV. I've seen an 85 inch TV at Sam's Club. Have you really? It is. That, a, like, are you sure it was 85 inch? Because I feel like the biggest I've seen at Costco maybe, maybe it was an 80 inch. Was 80. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But still, 80 inch. It's big. It's fantastic. So 85. Hey, man, I can remember Gosh. a time when a 55-inch TV seemed big. <laughs> That's true. And then you get one, and then pretty soon, it's not a big TV. It's pretty just soon it's, a TV. It's going to be a, like, half-sphere TV that, like, goes over your head mm-hmm. for 360 viewing. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? Bandai Namco, I think it is. They Have you ever seen their arcade machines that are like that? Are they really? Wow. Yes. They, That's they, cool. Yeah. You actually... they. I, there's a name for it. It's like a pod, mm-hmm. and the only game I think they have in the United States that uses it is a Star Wars game. But like in Japan, and I think other places in Asia, they have some other games that fit in that. But you kind of sit in this chair, and the screen is a big circle that kind of it's like it doesn't get your entire view, but it takes up a lot of your view. Mm-hmm. It is cool, and, and the chair rotates around like it, 360 degrees. Or it doesn't do that. Oh. No, no, no. No, no. When I say it's a big circle, I don't mean like a sphere. Right. Think, think about staring at a flat earth, Nick. It's not a sphere. <laughs> it's, it's like a circle, but you know, it comes up a little bit on the side. So there's a turtle holding your chair up is what yeah, you're saying. That's what I'm okay. saying. Is, got yeah. it. Okay. And then there's that's all mm-hmm. on the back of a very large something else yeah. in the sky. Yep. Um, yeah. But 85 inch TV, 8K, okay. which there, there is no there's 8K. There's no 8K. There's nothing. They're going to upsample? Yes, probably. Is, is what they would do? 4K yeah. to 8K? Okay. Yeah, so you put a 4K image on an 8K TV. In fairness, I watch a lot of 1080p Blu-rays on a 4K TV, so whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so how much do you think you would pay? Remember, it's commercially available. This is not like a showroom, like I'm going to CES kind of thing. Like You can buy this TV, 85-inch 8K TV. Is it OLED? Because uh, that does make a difference. It. You're right, it does. You know what it doesn't say? Okay. I, I don't know the answer to that. No, no, no. It's QLED. <laughs> that's their QLED, which is Samsung's like, I think that's their answer to okay. OLED. It, since this is the first release, it's always like a ridiculous price. I'm going to say $10,000. Oh, you're a sweet kid, Nick. <laughs> you really are. The guys at Samsung are so glad to hear you stopping by. And you know what? Here's a couple thousand dollars. Go play out on the playground for a while. <laughs> 15,000. Okay. So it's one of those things if where you're it's gonna like. If you're going to spend 10, might as well spend 15. Well, what's five more? Yeah. You know, it's no big deal. It's fine. $15,000, 85-inch TV. And a lot of people are like, I spent that much on my car. Do with this TV, you won't need to go anywhere. It's like you don't even need a car. Just get a TV. You know, that's fine. Because with the 85 inches coming out, and eventually they'll start coming down in price Mm -hmm. and that will then push the price of the 70 inches down in price and then plebes like me can upgrade my 65 inch man what's wrong with you i got a 70 inch my life's never been better than it is right now (laughs) this was the worst of the riot and we'd like to congratulate you on having the stomach to stick around to the very end 
The Riot exists because Radio U exists. And Radio U only exists because of your support. Find out more and give now at RadioU.com slash donate. A little bit for Drink me, a little, a little bit for my friend, the my- pumpkin.